I love miniatures, I love building them, I love painting them, and usually they come in the form of these little plastic men. Um, but for my birthday, my brother got me this. A New Republic X-Wing T-70 miniature kit, and I built it and I painted it a week ago. And then I thought, you know what, it would be really fun to make a short scene using this Starfighter but doing it like George Lucas and the team at Lucasfilm did in the originals. You see, what they did is they had these miniatures in varying sizes and they recorded them against a blue screen and then used motion control camera rigs to film several and put them together in the same shot and back then on film it was a huge deal and it was a really complicated process. But nowadays with digital cameras and something like the ultra key effect on Premiere Pro, it shouldn't be too hard, right? The Falcon in which the intrepid adventurers are traveling is in fact a model. Designed and built by a Hollywood special effects house, it is photographed by a computer controlled camera. By photographing the model against a blue screen, it will later be possible to add different backgrounds and other moving objects to the scene. This can be done by means of double and triple exposures. The work is painstaking and precise. It is an endeavor where details count. So I got to work and uh, started filming it and I used my brother's uh, green screen blanket and uh, just threw it against the wall and uh, put a light on it and then I filmed the, the miniature, the X-Wing, with my black magic. Now I don't have a slider or any fancy camera movement control things, I don't have a gimbal to get any smooth shots, so I was more or less left to my own hands. I did try using this Lego kit, putting it on a table and driving it up and down, but it wasn't as smooth as I would have liked, um, so I left that. Um, in the end, the footage I got wasn't that smooth, it was quite a bit jittery, um, but it turned out okay. I put a warp stabilizer on one or two shots in Premiere, so that stabilized it out a bit, and it kind of added to the sort of campy nature of the whole video. It's, this scene is not about being as realistic as possible. I mean, CG can do that much better than miniatures can. It's more about trying to recreate the process that Lucasfilm used to create the Star Wars movies and sort of respecting what it took to make those great films. What I noticed when I tried to bring the footage into Premiere Pro is that I had done very bad green screen work indeed. The green screen wasn't lit out in a homogenous tone, there were shadows and highlights and it was a pain to key out. Um, in some parts it even occluded parts of the miniature and um, in one or two shots you can see part of the wing is missing. Furthermore, for some scenes I put it on the pedestal and I had to key that out, um, but when the wings clipped over the pedestal that was hard uh, with the mats and I think in one shot you can even see the pedestal remaining. At the end of the day I didn't want to be too perfectionist about it because it was more of like a, a proof of concept that something like this is possible. After ultra keying out the green, I tracked out the pedestal as said and some background elements that I had in the shot. Then I added the background. I put some scaling there just to give it a bit of motion. I um, added an asteroid uh, PNG for one of the scenes. I think it, it adds something to the scene and makes it look rather interesting, but it's just a 2D layer and um, you realize that after a second or two. It's not too bad, it kind of goes into the whole campy nature of the video, um, but it's it's there and it's noticeable, but you know, that's the way it is. For the Star Destroyer, once again, I just took a, took a PNG, scaled it, obviously it doesn't have the right uh, a parallax, um, hey, that's the way it is. The laser beams in the first shot were just 
green squares that I stretched and then distorted a little bit and then made really fast so you wouldn't notice it too much. I think what really improved this short clip is the sound design. Without the sound design, it would literally just look like some dude playing with his toy. Uh, but the sound design um, really lended a bit of realism. Not too much, but just enough to make it somewhat believable. Um, the X-Wing sounds I had uh, gotten from a user on YouTube. I'll link him in the description. He made a great video compiling a bunch of X-Wing um, engine sounds. I use the turbo laser sounds from the Star Destroyers for the green shots and for the little bit of narration in the beginning. Those are Battlefront 2 um, voice lines from the Rebel Fraction, I believe it is. So after having compiled all of that, um, I did a quick little color grade. I wanted to make it look rather cold. Um, not so much warmth, I felt that fit better to space and I wanted stark contrast between where the light hit the wing um, and where it didn't. So, you know, in space there's no diffusion of light. Um, and I think that worked out quite well, the color grade. What I would change if I were to do this again next time is I would get myself some sort of slider or build one that might be a project for the future actually now that I think of it. Um, or something so I can reproduce smooth motions. I had to do about 20 takes per shot to get it somewhat smooth and even then it is jittery and you notice that it's not smooth. So f first thing is I would uh, invest or build in something to give me smooth camera motion. Second thing is lighting out the green screen, getting rid of all folds, ironing it before and uh, uh, getting several lights to shine on it and get a homogeneous tone on it because that's really important. And that took a lot of time to manually correct the errors I had done with lighting. It would have taken me 20 minutes to fix the lighting in real life. It took me an hour or two to fix the errors I had made in post then. So better planning would have gone a long way. Um, if I were to do a short film in this concept with miniatures uh, in space, I would storyboard it first because when I was uh, uh, filming this little proof of concept, I was just checking out what would work, what wouldn't work and just played around with it, which is great for getting ideas. The story for the clip just sort of evolved uh, naturally through the course of it. The idea of adding a Star Destroyer came while I was editing the thing. Uh, it wasn't something I had planned before. So I guess it, there's positives and negatives to not having a storyboard, but if I were to do a film, I think I would plan it out beforehand um, and draw every shot exactly how I wanted it. It will also make it easier for me to get those shots done. So I learned a bunch of things uh, working on this. It was a lot of fun. If you have a green screen at home and a digital camera and some sort of toy or plane or something, I can only recommend doing something similar. It's great fun. It doesn't take too long. Um, and it's uh, a really creative process because once you have the things in front of you when you're editing, uh, you really see new avenues with what you could do with it. And you can totally change the context by the small little edits you do. Um, so I'd recommend doing something similar. Um, it was a bunch of fun pretending to be George Lucas, uh, directing my own little Star Wars film. Uh, I recommend you do the same thing too. If you have a bit of time now during the Corona lockdown, um, if you don't, summer holidays around the corner. That's all for me in this video. I'm gonna upload a new video next Saturday, as always. Until then, I wish you a great week. I hope you have a great time. Um, until then, take care. See ya.